Rub up your engines! Well, at least the price of oil has dropped 27% so far from the record high. You know, it's the usual knee-jerk reaction of this war in Ukraine, uh, especially in the United States. I mean, we get 3% of our crude oil from Russia. I mean, 61% of it comes from Canada. You know, we be, should be more worried about, uh, you know, the Canadians. <laughs> than the Russians, you know? They don't supply us all that much oil. Capitalist economies, people are greedy whenever there's an excuse they can make money. I remember back in the day when I was in Houston, the weather guy there, he used to play the oil market when he knew a hurricane was coming. Because if a hurricane came in the Gulf, the price of oil would go up because they had to shut the oil rigs down and there's a knee-jerk reaction, even though it only lasted two or three days or something, right? He'd play the spot market and make money on oil. I mean, it's just how nutty our society is. Well, at least the price of oil is starting to come back down now. People will fill in the space. If the Russians aren't selling oil to people, people will get it from someplace else, Venezuela, Mexico, wherever, Saudi Arabia. It's not like they're the only people on the planet. The Russians, they really made a big error there thinking that people are gonna care. They can get oil from lots of places. At least it's coming down now. Of course, it'll be the usual. You know, it'll be a while for the price of gas to come down because they're so greedy. Oh, well, let's keep it up as high as we can so we can make as much as the oil company. You know, they're real scoundrels. They don't care. They're just out to make as much as they can as fast as they can. Well, here we go. Tesla fired one of their employees after he gave bad reviews of their self-driving system on his YouTube channel. The guy's name was John Burnell. He was an employee, and they didn't like what he said. So not only did they fire him, but they cut off all his access to the beta self driving driving system, even though he had bought his own 2021 Model 3 and didn't have any safety strikes on his software that would ban him. They got set up so that if you drive like a maniac and you don't do it right and you're sleeping or something while it's driving itself, you get strikes and then you can't have the system and it shuts itself off. He didn't have any of those. They obviously didn't like that. He didn't say great things. Old Elon, sometimes he asks a lot like Putin, you know. Nobody can disagree with it if they do. You know, you're fired. Well, at least the guy was fired and he wasn't put in jail or assassinated. <laughs> it hasn't gone that far, but I mean, that, that's the funny thing about Tesla, you know. They didn't even have a public relations department. They used to but Elon shut it down because he didn't have to deal with everybody's complaints. So, oh, just uh, take it to our complaint department. You go there and there's nobody there. <laughs> So they fired the poor guy because, you know, he was given not positive glowing remarks. That's why you need to watch guys like me. When I do car reviews and I talk about cars, I have regular people who actually own the cars bring them to me. Now, sometimes there are people that want to show off their car. Uh, I still show what's right and what's wrong. A lot of times it's people that are complaining about their car, getting in there and saying, yeah, look at the problem this guy had. His car's only got this many miles. It's broken already. But I don't have to worry about the company saying, well, you can't get our cars anymore because they're cars that other people have bought. <laughs> And there's not much a company can do in the United States once you buy their car, other than this crap where they can take your software away. <laughs> Regular car manufacturers can't do anything. You buy a crappy car, take it to a guy like me and says, look at the problems. There's nothing they can do about it. That's why I do what I do. I like showing the problems that people have, and I'm honest about it. And there's nobody that's sitting above me. I'm, I run my own business. Nobody says, Scotty, you can't say this. You can't do that except me. And I'm only going to do it honestly because I have no vested interest in any of these companies. I I just want to tell the truth to help people out. Hey, if a new company comes out and they make the best car in the world, I will gladly talk about it. But if you remember, a month and a half ago, I did a video challenging the electric car makers. Give me one for a year to drive. Guess what? They haven't sent me a single one. They haven't even contacted me because they're afraid of the truth. So you want the truth. Listen to me. Don't listen to these people that are trying to hide it. Elon trying to hide bad news about his cars. I'll tell you the truth. Rick 35 says, I got a 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee. I replaced the brakes with new rotors and ceramic pads about a year ago, and now it feels like warped rotors again. They look good, but have a purplish color in the middle. I wonder if the ceramic pads are the problem. Should I replace them with semi-metallic pads and new rotors? Semi-metallic are the ones that wear the rotors out the fastest. The name itself tells you semi-metallic means you got pieces of metal. The metal will eat them out faster. 
Now, I don't know what kind of ceramic pads you put on it. Here's the thing. They can be called ceramic if they have any kind of ceramic material. There's no law that says they have to be made a certain way. There are some really crappy ceramic pads out there, and there are some excellent ones. Now, from my experience, I've done that myself. I find that if I use cheap ceramic pads on new rotors, they would still warp quickly, get the shaking, booing, right? I now, when I work on my own cars, will only use Akabono ceramic pads. They some of the Japanese companies, they make them for all kinds of cars. They know how to make ceramic pads. And when I switch to only Akabona ceramic pads and put new rotors on, I have no problems at all. I have tried other types of ceramic pads and within a year of driving, the new rotors have warped because there's no law that says what they are. It's just, it's kind of like synthetic oil. It means that you had oil that's been treated and now it's called synthetic, but they can be treated in various different ways. So not all synthetic oils are created equal, just like not all ceramic pads. So if I were you, I would get new rotors and I would put on Akabona ceramic pads. I know they make a bonus for Grand Cherokees and you'll probably find you won't have any problems for a long time as you'll thank me. The problem is probably the pads that you put on are cheaper pads and they've eaten up the rotors. But you might have also gotten cheap rotors. Let's say you went to a discount auto parts store and bought the cheapest rotors they have. Don't do it. They're made in China. They're cheaper made. They will warp faster. Get the OEM rotors. They're going to last a lot longer. Sonny says, I think I got a bad brake booster a guy put on. Can I put smoke in it to test it to see if it's leaking? Well, not really. Here's the way you would really test them. Their vacuum, your engine runs, sucks air, right? That sucking air vacuum is hooked up to your booster and that boosts it. So it's a vacuum system. So what you would do is you would take the line off of the brake booster, right? And then there's that rubber part. Then you'd get a hose that fit in there and you would put a vacuum pump with a gauge on it. You can get them at any auto parts store for like 40 bucks. And you would suck the vacuum. And then you'd watch it. If it held vacuum, it's fine. But if the vacuum went from vacuum back to no pressure at all, you'd know the booster was bad. It needs replacing. They're a vacuum system. They suck it in. And if it's bad, hey, take it back to whoever put it on and get another one. It's an expensive job. I wouldn't pay a guy twice to do something if he screwed it up. Now, it could easily be something else. Vacuum test it. If it holds vacuum, it's something else. If it doesn't, that's the problem. Civic driver says, I got a 2020 Honda Civic sedan. I want to test my battery and the tester asked for the cold cranking. Battery doesn't say anything. How can I tell what it is? I'm assuming you got the 1.5 liter engine. They have various engines, but most of them have the 1.5. If it's a 1.5, it is a 500 cold cranking app. One of the bigger engines, if you got a bigger engine, there's 600 cold cranking apps, and that's what you would put on to do the test. Now, let's say you're replacing the battery. I personally would put the biggest cranking app battery, say if you had a 500 cold cranking app when it does go bad, I would see if you can get a 600 that'll fit, put it in. It's just a more powerful battery. It'll last longer. And the reason Honda doesn't put them in is because it costs more money and they want to build them a little bit cheaper. You got a 1.5, set your tester to 500 cold cranking amps and see. It's a 2020. It should still be good. But I mean, you never know. Like I say, if you're going to replace it, I would replace it with a bigger battery. It would work better and last longer. They just put the smaller in because it's cheaper to make it that way. Well, Cadillac next week is beginning production of the first electric car there. And it's going to be just down the street south of Nashville in Spring Hill, Tennessee, where they had a big battle in the Civil War, one of the early Union victories that they had. Now, they say it's going to start at 59900 so, you know, it's pretty much in the line of the lower-priced Teslas, at least the list price. We all know what that means today. Who knows what it'll actually sell for. That's going to be an electric crossover vehicle, and they feel that's going to start arriving at the Cadillac dealers in May. So Cadillac's jumping into the electric car market with a new model that they're making just south of Nashville here. A lot of companies are moving to Tennessee because the state taxes are so low. Kia's making another plant here. A lot of people are coming here because they realize, hey, they pay less taxes. They got a lot of land. It's still wide open. It's not like California where everybody's leaving in droves. Right, they're going to be making their first electric car. We'll see how that pans out. GM's had some pretty bad luck with their electric car so far. Let's hope they can do a better job on this Cadillac Lyrique that they did with their other electric cars. That all the batteries started on fire and they had to recall every single one of them. So maybe they learned a lesson from that. Time will tell. They'll be out in May, supposedly. Well, you think Americans put crazy modifications on their car. There's a guy in Ukraine that has his BMW convertible and 
in the trunk, he mounted a Russian 50 caliber machine gun. The Russians have also have a 50 caliber, it's just their own. It's not our design. And he put a bracket, took the trunk off, put a bracket in, and he was very patriotic, shouting Ukrainian patriotic slogans in his video. Check out the YouTube video, it's kind of interesting, proving that yes, you can use a BMW for more than just the ultimate driving machine. Maybe it can become the ultimate fighting machine there too. It wasn't a joke either. You could see he had those braces welded in, solid steel, and mounted it on there. Where there's a will, there's a way. And since it's a convertible, it can easily access it. It's not like tear the roof off the car to get to it. It's a convertible, keep it down, and then use it from the guy in the back seat. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.